Okay, everyone can see my screen. Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Good. So I wanted to talk about state of Drupal documentation. That kind of. This is a topic that um, I've been dwelling on for a while, and um, here it's the first take on it. The idea behind this talk. So as we improve. The documentation, fingers crossed, uh, we can uh, uh, improve the state of this presentation, uh, as well as uh, help people to guide through different um, obstacles and um, confusions that I encountered. Okay, there you go. So first, I would like to pay uh, respect to traditional custodians of the land where I'm presenting from, which is a Brisbane Medellin area. And this is a uh, Turbo, Jager, and Jager people. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm a teacher, I'm a Drupal contributor, and I'm also a Drupal Brisbane meetup organizer, one of the organizers. So I got a few questions for you. Uh, as uh, I assume everyone is a seasoned Drupal user here. So when last time did you send a link to Drupal help? And uh, um, I guess that would be a set of rhetorical question. You can answer it in your own time or you can contact me and we can discuss those things. But this is actually something I start thinking when I start teaching Drupal more and more and more. And most of my, uh, most of my tutorials are private tutorials. So I work with a company and upskill their team uh, to get them to a Drupal administrator or developer level. So as uh, I develop the guides, I start sending the links and the links mostly to Drupal.org. And I realized that the state that Drupal help uh, was is quite inconsistent. Uh, this is very normal for software development to have, uh, you know, uh, help not getting as much love due to the budget constraints or time constraints or anything, even on, you know, private projects. These days I start with creating a readme.md, uh, but usually when you get the project, sometimes they won't even come with the documentation. Uh, second question is, did you review Drupal help recently? And if you didn't, what stopped you from being? Because I assume you're working with uh, users who would like to know more Drupal. There are new developers coming in and you'll probably teach them something. So if you didn't send them a link to a certain guide or certain page, how to do things, why didn't you do it? Did you have enough time to spend with them or you weren't... Um, confident that the link that actually sits on drupal.org or somewhere else like a YouTube video or blog is actually up to date. And the last question is, did you update Drupal help recently? And obviously that would be the last one because if you did send the link and if you did review the page, uh, even if you find some inconsistencies, why didn't you update, help, or contribute to it? So today's agenda, we're going to talk about the Drupal help module. We're going to talk about the help on Drupal.org and how to get help. Uh, we're going to talk about help examples from the other systems. I decided to use just one system per presentation, so we won't mix and match for now. But as uh, my research will go along, I will start adding the other systems and other help examples, good and bad. And uh, we'll talk about help issues and how to resolve them, or at least we'll try to resolve them. Feel free to stop me anytime. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, not in the end, but during, because this presentation is trying to cover quite a few things. So Drupal module, help modules, um, I know we don't usually enable them as a seasoned developers, or they enable and we don't care about them. But there are technically, this is a screenshot of 10.3.1, the latest stable version of Drupal. And uh, as you can see, there are two modules. One is a help module, 
And another one is the help topics module, which is, you can see as 10.3, it was moved from core to core experimental and it was labeled as deprecated, meaning it would be leaving the core system soon. However, you won't find uh, help topics uh, contributed module because when the uh, module uh, leaves the system, uh, usually there is a contributed module, so something like quick edit or all themes that we used um, Prad Drupal 10.2, right? So we actually try to use help to see if we can get an answer for that. So here is my website and here. Here's my help module. So if I'll click on help topics, uh, once we enable the modules, we actually can get uh, each module if they implemented the specific hook they are getting the help page. And in our case, um, help page is very small and says help topics module has been moved to help module. See the help page to view topics. So that's a good news. So they actually keep the topics in the core because they, when they when I saw the first announcement that's module being deprecated, I was like, oh, I'm surprised it didn't go through. So difference between help and help uh, topics was that the help only gives you ability to create one page unless you extend it with a custom functionality uh, and talks about that. Whereas topics, they actually can be a multi-pages guide doing specific things. Uh, now, for example, changing ba basic site settings, right? So it's actually talks about uh, site settings and uh, how to do a specific things. So it actually gives you a goal, what to do, configure the basic settings, steps, how to do it, additional resources and related topics that are available through the website. So in this case, we actually, uh, it's uh, pretty cool to have uh, this thing, but if we'll go to system basic site settings, there's no link to help here, which is obviously kind of disconnect. So imagining the new user would come in here and not having any link shows us that uh, they need to investigate, that they need to enable help, and then they need to, you know, um, go somewhere. Uh, one of the good examples of help is a web form module. So when you enable the web form module, I think an extend on the top, you would get like uh, different things here, here. Congratulations, you have successfully installed the web form module, learn about web forms or party libraries and, and so on and so forth, and even watch the video. The web form kind of gives us uh, quite an interesting way how we can improve the functionality and help beginners and also seasoned users to go straight to the help topics. At least we enabled the module. So it means we kind of interested in uh, using. So this is a uh, help uh, modules, which are part of the core. And obviously now it's one. So it's a good idea to go and actually review help uh, topics, but uh, what I would like to concentrate is um, uh, help on Drupal.org, which is the next topic. But this is a help about the help topics. And here it actually says exactly what I was just saying. So it was introduced in Drupal 8.8. .8. And as of 26th of June, 2023, when 10.2 was released, the functionality is provided in the core help module uh, by the core help module. So they're basically saying in the first paragraph exactly what they just uh, investigated. So at least we have a page about help topics and uh, it says, what to do. However, you can see it actually sits in documenting your project guide. So again, I'm not sure if that, that's easy to find. So let's talk about help on Drupal.org. So if we'll go, it's relatively easy to find. So it's resources, documentation, and it consists of a bunch of sections. 
So here, here's our documentation. And getting started, try Drupal Online, create Drupal demo site on your local machine. Guides, then it's actually curated guides, Drupal user guide, evaluator guide, local development guide. Then there's Drupal Wiki, which uh, there is one for Drupal, a catch-all guide for Drupal 8, 9, 10, and later. Development, quite a comprehensive guide on Drupal 7, links to the API, and uh, Drupal.org documentation. So I was reviewing this page today first, and I found the interesting thing is looking for documentation about Drupal.org itself rather than Drupal software, find it here. So uh, there's no link on here, but I assume if we'll click on Drupal.org documentation, we'll, 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 we'll go there. So that's kind of interesting because first I was like, oh, here, there's no link, uh, but you can actually go and see documentation about Drupal.org here. Okay. We'll continue. So as I mentioned before, all this section of the documentation front page, there is also a user guide and I'm not gonna focus too much on the user guide, but uh, I'm still didn't find the answer. This is a static HTML pages uh, and that provide a guide. So you can see it's index HTML and most of the pages that sits here is actually HTML. There is a way to edit it and view history, but either it's a um, very outdated guide or there is some other system that actually uh, was created before. So I'm yet to review it and see how it correlates to the other one. It still sits in the main documentation, so it would be good to review it at one point. But it's there and it's in the main menu, so. Well, help examples. So uh, when you use the product, doesn't matter what it is, GitHub, uh, use Docker, um, use development tools or some, um, you know, click and drag tools, you always need some help. And for today demonstration, I decided to look at the GitLab documentation because I use it quite a lot and I like a few things here. So uh, it's well organized, what I like. And uh, you can also in the top right corner, you, you can see the version. So you can actually switch between the versions quite easily. I think something that Drupal um, is still didn't get uh, quite right. So there, there are versions of the documentation and a lot of things like Symfony and uh, Laravel are doing very, very similar. Uh, so saying that, that uh, Laravel and Symfony, they are frameworks. So it's a bit more straightforward whereas Drupal is content management system. Although again, GitLab is also not a framework, right? It's a, there are a lot of products inside GitLab and I think it's organized quite well. Here is an example of the standard uh, GitLab page. So it's clear and it's actually very similar to Drupal as we'll see uh, stuff on Drupal.org. So you have uh, chapters on the left-hand side, you got your content in the middle, on the right-hand side, you got uh, headers of the current page. So like a table of content for a specific page. If you look at the content itself, it has a clear links, uh, technical stuff like file names are highlighted uh, by gray. And you can also see there is kind of version and information here. So for which tier or which product these uh, things are working. What I liked about GitLab is that for different features, they have a history section. Something similar that we saw uh, in Drupal.org for help topics where they described um, when it was um, created, but it's actually highlighted and it's on top and you can uh, click and close it, which I find it's very cool because you can go and see how it was introduced in this particular version. So I know that this uh, documentation really 
relative to me or I'm using different versions, so not really relative. So this is something we're gonna talk about uh, today, especially during the contribution part. So help issues, which help issues I found. So when I was teaching in a local college, uh, I was asking why Drupal is only getting like one or two weeks to students. And I was asking teachers as well, what are the biggest challenges you faced? And one of the teachers told me quite an interesting story. He said, uh, you know, like I give students kind of self-learning task, how to build a module for Drupal. However, I am find it very confusing when I try to do that because when I did the research, I couldn't find anything on Drupal 10 version. It was everything on Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. So I actually couldn't find any guides. And that's when it became clear for me that we all aware that Drupal 10, it's basically uh, upgrade from Drupal 9 and upgrade from Drupal 8. And the functionality is very similar. How people who are using the guides, they had no clue. They thought if it says as Drupal 8, they thought, oh, it's like now two versions behind, so we can't use it really. So as I mentioned before, uh, some pages do contain information about which version particular feature was introduced or which version uh, which version it was removed, but most of the pages don't. So I, once we get to the proposed solutions, I'll share a couple of ideas, or we can do something like uh, uh, GitLab does. So we can actually go and uh, add the specific version for each feature and review the documentation. Uh, poorly written information uh, is uh, another one. And this is kind of controversial because obviously we're not here to go and blame people who actually put an effort into documentation and saying you writing is poor or, you know, uh, we all, we, we, like most of us, I'm not a great writer and I need to review my stuff two or three times before kind of publishing it or like even email. I write it at night and I review it in the morning and then I'm thinking, who wrote this stuff? It wasn't me last night, uh, but that's a reality. So it needs constant improvement. And that's why we have the system that actually uses revision. So I was teaching a class on... Uh, content staging and uh, workflows. And there was a fire alarm system happening at my house. So before teaching the revision, I sent this page. So I Googled and sent this page to my students saying, hey, while I'm walking down 20 floors and fire alarm is going off, can you just read uh, this page? And uh, then I come back and will hopefully jump on course. And when I came back, he had a quite a comprehensive feedback for me that this is a very, very poorly written page with no screenshots. And uh, it was quite confusing. So uh, then I was like, oh, yeah, maybe before I'm sending the page like this, I need to review it myself. And this is where I start reviewing uh, more and more pages. But the reality is you'll find a lot of pages here is a node revision. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, there is no uh, specific screenshots as you would expect in a guide. It's all kind of written in a plain text. You don't really know what's happening uh, here unless you actually go and read ev everything. Right, so this page definitely needs improvement. Incorrect information is another big big one. So here, uh, one of my colleagues discovered while working on CK Editor 5 style sheets that uh, how to add CSSs to CK Editor 5, which we use CK Editor 5 style sheets. Uh, 
uh, right? And uh, that's what you do in uh, theme. But an example that they provided, an example that they provided, they actually say go um, edit core uh, because I'm using, uh, he, here I have aloe vera as my default theme. So they say go to aloe vera, add these lines to aloe vera, and that's how you would get, um, this is how the seven would Thank pick you. up. Uh, I think so. I, he has mic on. Was that a que was that a question? Uh -huh. No. Uh, so yeah, and basically this particular guy it says uh, go and modify the core, which we as a developer know it's a no no, but that's actually part of the guide. Although it does say add the full information to your default theme, kind of implying that. You probably will be using some custom theme when you update it, but uh, it's still the documentation still clearly shows that he or she, whoever edited it, uh, updated the core, which is not a very good practice. Right? So technically, I label it is um, incorrect information and uh, uh, needs to be updated as well. Mixing guides for known coders and a code. So I found a lot of guides when I was building my courses. Uh, let's say specifically I'm building my course on uh, Drupal administrator course. So there's no development involved and a lot of pages, a lot of links I provided the link to. It starts, for example, the menu guide did it. No, I didn't add any screenshots for this one yet. So. There is a menu topic. You talk about the menus, how to create the menu. And on the bottom, there would be a code example, which is fine, but I think it actually has to be, you know, rather than Drupal for administrators, it has to be placed in the uh, development guide. And people who curate the guides probably need to review uh, and make sure that if someone comes in and adds the code example, they either can quickly recommend them to the correct guy to put it in or update this information themselves, notifying the editor saying, hey, your, uh, your, your code example is great. It was just moved to a corresponding guy. So I didn't find that the kind of overarching authority for each specific help issue on help. There is someone, it's very hard to find out who to ask, uh, but I put together the guide on how to get some help, uh, updating help and how to help Drupal to get their help. First one is review dates. So one of the pages I showed before is um, actually from 2020, actually number of pages if you saw before from 2020. So it means no one touched this page for four years, right? There's a lot of things happened in uh, four years. One of the big ones is Drupal changed the themes, the core themes, for example. So if the page contains screenshots, uh, probably a good idea to go and update it. Maybe also a good idea to have some sort of a um, list of pages that are getting out of date and say, review page, change status to ready for review every uh, two years or so. Right. So the next thing to do is review content. Again, I'm not asking you to go pick up the whole guide and start reviewing, but pick one page. You already saw a couple of examples here today. I'm sure you're working on something the core related. Um, even jumping on uh, topics, uh, the help topics that are bundled with Drupal core and just reading through them, uh, possibly, you know, searching. Do you understand what needs to be done? Put beginner's hat on and review the content. Sometimes page gives you um, interesting uh, 
comments. For example, when you set the status of the page to needs review, it says, uh, this documentation needs review. See help improve this page in the sidebar. And if we look at it, there. So how to style custom content if you get it before. Okay, so here's our warnings. We can actually go down here and see help improve this page. So they say login, click edit. Uh, you can log in and click discuss. This is where, for example, if you're not sure if something needs to review, you can actually discuss the question. And everyone who follows this page, including the all the editors and creator, they would get some sort of notification. And you can see there is uh, there are some suggestions as well that might have been uh, suggested, but never uh, never added. Here we can see. The update was done almost a day later, needs review, but no one reviewed it since 2022. And then 2024, someone else went and added, added CK Editor 5 or CK Editor 4 um, information. So check those suggestions. It also says page has not been yet reviewed by CK Editor 5 module maintainers. So it's a good idea sometimes I find to pin them in uh, Slack. And that's the next step. Join documentation on Slack. I'm trying to keep it alive. It kind of went uh, quiet a bit, but you know, as I said, documentation doesn't get much love. So I'm trying to connect the right one. There is uh, sometimes core maintainers come in and asking for a guide updates or I'm putting, you'll see in the last couple of days, I put a bunch of links from Drupal 11 initiative. Uh, I put the links from uh, organizers as well. There was a chat about Drupal.org help. So, uh, and what we do, I'll talk about Brisbane Meetup in a second, but I always put the links like here on top saying, here's the page, I updated it. Can you go and review it? A few people already came back to me. So the next meetup, I will go and implement those changes before Drupal 11 upgrade. Okay, review screenshots. I also, uh, so I went to CK Editor 5 guide and there was none, so. The only examples were on CK Editor 4. So I added CK Editor 5 guide and how to use it. Right, so if we go Drupal. You also find that Google search is uh, not necessarily will give you a bunch of uh, information on um, CK uh, to actually to Drupal.org straight away. There would be mix of um, blogs as well. So this is a development guide. Oh. This one. I didn't save the link, but basically there was just one. Uh, how to use CK Editor 4. So I uh, added CK Editor 5. I think it was uh, using text formats. Uh, not here as well. Anyway, uh, I'll add it next time. So I just went and add a bunch of screenshots. The issue is I wasn't able to add the page here in the table of content. So once you review screenshots, the next step would be uh, contact maintainers. Now, how to do that? So if you're already on Slack, 
check out who is the maintainer of particular section. The way to do it is you go to any guide. For example, here you scroll down. If you don't see the maintainers here, go up. So actually go and click on chapter six here. Scroll down. If there is no one here, you can go Drupal user guide here. And no maintainers here because we actually end up in this uh, second thing, which is a static uh, HTML. So then you know, oh, it's uh, actually all system. But if you go to here, right? Same thing, scrolling down, no maintainers, go up the level, documenting your projects, you will see uh, the maintainers on the right hand side. Hovering over would actually tell you uh, what's the user handle is. And I seem to be quite lucky. So you can either use the uh, Drupal name or the full name of the provided it. And in about 80% chances, you would actually be able to contact them on Drupal.org in documentation um, channel. Some people like to do it privately. I actually, uh, I, I think it might other people see it who is uh, doing the same thing, but that's the way how I found it. So if we'll go back to Slack, uh, where's my Slack? So I'll just show you an example of um, Slack Drupal. So example of one of the conversation that happened uh, today or yesterday. So documentation here. And here you can see uh, the quiet one who is a big contributor. He said, can anyone add this page to the menu of the parent? So he created the page. He created the page restore the anonymous user ID zero user record, right? In the troubleshooting Drupal guide. And I went to troubleshooting Drupal guide. And I saw there is only one maintainer. So I went and found his name. So Lomas Rishi Gupta, Lomaser. So I just went, created a thread and said, hey, I found two users with a similar name. I ask if they are maintainer and can you help with the task? Then someone else jumped in. So Joe jumped in and helped to do that. And I said, maybe you need a maintainer. I'm happy to help with the maintaining this particular guy. So he said, yeah, I'll add anyone if anyone wants to be a maintainer. So this creates kind of natural flow of things like with modules and making sure that, you know, uh, we always can go and uh, contribute to stuff. Uh, one of the last thing, if you are writing a blog, um, for example, today I want posted a great uh, presentation. So it's like a presentation, how to use front no link and button in menu items. So it's a great read. Uh, and I thought, oh, I wonder if Drupal help actually has it. So if you're writing a blog about something, review help. So I went and review help and I only found the information about front, but not about button and not about what's the third one, no link kind of thing. So in this case, it would be good to update this guide necessarily need to go deep, but what you can also do, you can actually add the link to your blog on the bottom of the page in the other resources. So technically it might create some technique technical depth, but uh, reality is we need more blocks linked from the help and we need the uh, help link from the blogs because then if you're talking about more complex topic, you can say, if you wanna read introduction to menu, you can go to Drupal thing and then the Drupal would actually link back to your blog saying, hey, this is how you use it with many examples. But the reality is the Drupal help actually doesn't have this information uh, on how to use specific tags inside the links. Uh, join contribution sprint. So if you go into the next event, be it Melbourne or uh, Singapore or in Europe, 
or your local meetup. Um, like we don't have many camps anymore, but hopefully they're coming back. So what we did with um, Brisbane meetup, because again, the numbers are not great. So we just turn into contribution sprint. So even if there are two of us, we just jump and review at least one piece of documentation or update it and ask others to review it. Uh, and we're doing it every month. So I we do link through the Google Meet, but you can, again, you can join remotely or you can even jump on Slack at that time and you'll see some activity happening and I'll tell you what to do. So we do it every month. So instead of presentation, we're actually doing contributions. And I'm hoping the next conference I go to, I'll probably try to do more help. A uh, fun fact that I didn't include in the presentation, none of the last Drupal cons has a talk about documentation. Uh, but they already have the whole uh, uh, track for Starshot. So I'm not sure how Starshot is going to work without documentation, but we'll, uh, we'll see. And uh, contribute. So, uh, you know, there's a uh, change in a couple of words. It's not super demanding, but it actually uh, helps to make Drupal a bit better. So if we go to one of the pages, I hope we can close it. So node revision, you can see there is big edit button. So the interface is quite good. Uh, it's uh, using some of the templates as well. So you can actually go and edit. It's uses CK Editor 4, but if you decide you want to put like I do for the pages I review, I go up and I put the information here. So here's a template. Uh, I use a version and say this page is for Drupal 10 and 11, or this feature was introduced in Drupal that. So now you have like a, something similar to what I showed in a GitLab documentation and uh, yeah. And it's nice to read as well, because if there is a tip, you can actually put it as a tip template. This guy, there's a note, there's a warning, for example, if it's been removed, right? There's a bunch of other stuff. You can actually make it quite an interesting read. Don't go too crazy, but uh, don't forget when you do change things, here's related content. You can add the links. You need to explain your changes. And if you'll see the page that has needs review and needs work, probably a good idea to jump and help them. Again, if you're reading something and doesn't make sense, same thing. Just um, you can go and uh, update it. Usually grammatically, they're pretty good, but sometimes logically you might read uh, and say, oh, I don't understand what it means. How would I phrase it? You can even ask the question rather than editing it. You can go to discuss and say, I'm proposing to add this section. What do you think? And uh, yeah, don't get upset if you don't get feedback straight away, but also place the link to this particular topic to Slack and you might get more feedback. Like with your, you know, first patches to Drupal, uh, it might take a while to get feedback on the first contribution, but once it becomes a habit, it just works like a charm. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. We obviously will have updates once we go to Drupal 11. And once we get couple more Brisbane meetups under the belt and start reviewing the full on guides. Uh, there is actually one more thing I forgot to add is that there is a link how to contribute and they say, here's an issue, how to create, become a maintainer of one of the guides. If you think one of the guides require, uh, like you actually committing to being a maintainer and I raised one issue and I still never heard back and it's been a couple of months already. So during the next meetup, I'll probably chase it up and see if anyone actually reviewing those things. But don't let that discourage you. Uh, 
any contribution is contribution. And uh, I agree there are some uh, changes needs to happen, especially for contributors, because at the moment it just tells on it says on your profile, you edited over one documentation page, over 10, over 50, over 100, and then over 1,000, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's as much as you get by contributing a lot. Saying that, the documentation is probably what will keep Drupal afloat. And obviously, uh, the better documentation we have, the more people, easier it would be more approachable for more people, including students. Because if you cannot build the curriculum based on Drupal.org material, then uh, why can't we just improve it? Any questions? No questions. <laughs> well, you know what to do now. So <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. I got for a listening. question. Sure. I got a question. Hello? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, okay, so uh, I think everyone has like different views and stuff on say things like Chat GPT, but um how how do you rate your you've been deep diving into the Drupal documentation lately? How would you rate it compared to, um, so like something like AI generated documentation asking questions to an AI? Uh, I spent a year teaching. Uh, I didn't see anything meaningful produced by AI tools in terms of the documentation. One thing is um, uh, I saw was quite impressive is when um, someone asked, chat GPT, uh, how to change specific thing in uh, Visual Studio Code, and it gave the right answer. Uh, the GPT st stands for generative, the G stands for generative. So you actually have 50-50 chance that it actually would generate something that, you know, out of nowhere. It would actually create something, um, hallucinate something as they like to call it. Uh, I also saw examples when someone asked, build me a Drupal module, and it would put together like a Frankenstein of um, Drupal 7 and Drupal 10. They are not a bad tools for reviewing, so I would use ChatGPT to rewrite something and say, can you make it more approachable? Or can you say more readable for kids? Uh, but what I find with the tools, so if you even have your... Uh, let's say draft of your help, you put one paragraph and say, rephrase it so it's more approachable for a non-technical person. And I find that it can rephrase it fine, but it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't know how to stop, for example. So it would put some sentences that uh, uh, just for the, volume of share so it seems like the modules models were trained to uh create a share volume of uh, text so like generating stuff for blogs and seo but for help it doesn't help because whatever it puts in there it outputs it uh twice as much yes it does rephrase it uh but some things it just does uh quite badly uh, and I didn't find that for help and for concise and straight to the point help, GPT tools or Gemini tools are the best because they do have some concepts that were trained for like expanding text. So you would say, can you give me a three lines of text or two sentences? It will give you three sentences. Uh, for example, that's, that's one of the common way you go. Give me two sentences about or rephrase this big paragraph as two sentences, uh, it might go and do three for you, which is not a biggie when you're trying to summarize a big piece of uh, like a Wikipedia, Wikipedia page. I, I found it's much better at summarizing Wikipedia pages than actually writing concise help. But um, if you would say that it's improved, you know, uh maybe a hundred percent or something over the last year or i mean are you saying that it's plateaued and it's not going to keep in improving in your opinion oh it, it might i just haven't seen the examples where it's uh you know 
everyone trying to show it like a leading tool that we all follow. In reality, it's it just a decent assistant. Uh, that's all it is. And assistant only if you know your topic. So for example, if you're, if my students were generating the code, but they don't understand the code, I find that's a bad assistance, even if it writes a good code, uh, it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do, which is teach. Uh, on the other hand, talking about help specifically, uh, I actually didn't see a decent help uh, generated. Like Microsoft, uh, they don't generate help using GPT tools actually write it themselves and read it themselves. When they start doing it, uh, I will start reviewing it and see how it's good. So if the company who actually has all the powers and all the tools in the world doesn't use GPT for help gener for creating a better help, well, why I would do that at this point? At the same time, I'm not saying no to it. I am uh, keep um, trying to break it. Uh, with some logical conundrums and other stuff and see how it reacts. Uh, but in terms of help, yeah, it's uh, it's a good experiment. Maybe we'll just take one page and ask it to produce a proper technical help and see what it does. Again, there is like now Gemini and there is a chat GPT, so why not? It just yeah, and then it, I, I suppose to put the to flip that around, if it's taken us 15 years to not have good Drupal documentation, do you think that humans will ever create good Drupal documentation? Uh, yes, there are projects that actually prove that uh, humans can write good documentation. No, it no, no. But, but, you know, people complain about the Drupal documentation and it's taken us 15 years to be at a point where we, we don't have, you know, complete documentation, you know. So like you were saying yourself, you know, the Slack channel is quiet and so forth. So just to flip that around, like, did we fail as humans to write good Drupal documentation? Like at what point do we kind of accept that? Well, there are attempts and some pages, they, it's not all bad, as I said. Uh, some things are bad and things are improving and we're trying to improve it. Uh, but in terms of uh, did we fail as a human, I think long time ago, but it doesn't stop us <laughs> from moving forward, you know, uh, still kind of kicking and screaming. And uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Oh, no worries. Thanks for the question. What's your experience, Simon, uh, with using GPT tools for documentation? Why did you ask this question? I'm curious. Um, I, I you guess have something to say. No, well, not really. I mean, I, I my personal opinion is that well, it's two things, two ways to look at it. Now, the first way is that in my experience, using ChatGPT or whatever is better if it had better training materials. So if you ask it something that's on Wikipedia and discussed everywhere, it's gonna give you correct information because the training materials are correct. If you ask, say, something that's emerging or something that's not very well documentate, documented, like it's not gonna, it doesn't have the, it's not gonna have the training materials and doesn't have introspection to determine that it's wrong. But on the other hand, the trajectory is quite like, firm like there's not like there's people talking about you know maxing out what you know how close they can get to you know true intelligence or whatever and that that might be we might have reached like a a point where we can't go any further but um but if you look at the last you know if you look at the the progress and you if you were to chart that you would say well based on this trajectory in you might you might say well in two years time no one's going to need any documentation on Drupal at all, like because the because it will just you know something will be able to train on all of the code that's in the open source repositories, all of the comments in the code, all of the comment, all of the discussions that happen various places, and no one's going to go to those to to Drupal at all. And so I suppose my question it's not really leading because I'm kind of. I'm not as close to the documentation that say Vladimir is. So Vladimir might be like, well, based on what I've seen, it, I, I personally think it's going to max out or I don't think it's going to keep continuing to improve or or maybe it's going to just augment what humans do, you know, because that's really what it, that's what I use it for. I augment what I actually do to a large degree. So 
Um, so that I suppose that's to give more context there, yeah, it's just asking Vladimir who's at the coalface looking at the documentation and who also, you know, like all of us has used ChatGPT, maybe what um what his opinion was about that. Uh, so at the at the moment, it uh, takes the same time to review uh, GPT generated text and the human generated text, and after doing uh, year worth of student assignments, uh, trust me, it's much uh, more entertaining to read the human generated text <laughs> and review it again same time, uh, but. Uh, after reviewing, you know, dozens and dozens of assignments, I actually can tell if the assignment is generated with tools, even if they use some tools to hide it, including like putting errors and other spelling mistakes and other stuff. But it's it's no fun. Uh, you turn into a robot, then once you start reviewing a lot of generated code, it uses the same patterns, obviously the one it was trained on, but it can, you know, it's funny how different models can miss some very basic conception. Because, for example, one model uh, cannot count, right? So, uh, uh, like you taught, you taught this model Drupal, but it's uh, it's just a simple example. But you didn't teach it how to count. So when it comes to the some math problem, which you, most of the humans basically can answer quite quickly, the model might struggle because it doesn't understand the difference between four and more than four. So it's um yeah it's an interesting chat but the reality is at the moment I feel like we have this um, GPT models they're like a human with uh, some bits of it missing a lot of bit, bits missing and you don't know which one so one might not be able to count another might not be able to uh, properly put together you know a couple of sentences but created code so this is where uh, it's like a box of chocolate I'm on <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I, I prefer humans. <laughs> from that perspective, from generating the help for now, but I'm sure we'll uh, reach the point where, you know, uh, we will be able to generate help, uh, assisted by machines. Yeah, I think the challenge here is that uh, when you <clears throat> using uh, machine learning for. Uh, documentation generation or the writing, then it's sort of weird because the machine learning will use those pages to train itself. So it's some sort of a loop. So for example, if a mistake was done, then the uh, GPT would learn it wrongly. Yeah, that's kind of one of concepts. But uh, in my view, Simon, if we're talking about, about it, that projection of where we're going to be in two years, I think in a couple of years, uh, we probably be relying on GPT uh, too much, like in my opinion, because it's much easier to ask GPT and it gives you almost the right answer, and you could fine tune your, your question, uh, fine tune the answer by uh, asking additional questions or pointing out that this is incorrect, and it magically um, can figure out the right option or the right answer. That's my um, experience with GPTs. Just had, this conversa just had this conversation yesterday at Joomla Meetup. Uh, chat GPT is pretty bad at regular expression. Now go and teach chat GPT regular expression and then we'll talk. Uh, another one is I was reading a blog, a uh, martial arts blog, and uh, uh, there was a, so like one of the Aikido masters, he was writing a blog and he said, oh, someone asked me, uh, like you're a martial arts master, but can you kick the ceiling? And uh, I try. I was using Google Gemini and say, generate me an image of you know like uh, Drupal mo dr droplet monster eating an astronaut, and it had no issue. But then I ask it to generate me an image of uh, martial arts master kicking the ceiling, and it just stuck. It couldn't generate anything. Uh, the best it came is like close up of the leg and the ceiling. It couldn't generate the hope. It just couldn't understand the concept of somebody kicking the ceiling. So that's what I'm saying between. So regular expression and somebody kicking the ceiling. That's the next barrier for ChatGPT. <laughs> All right, I'll stop recording now.